views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show that's coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited about today's show. I'm so thrilled to be introducing you to an amazing woman. You know, somebody that has said yes to helping other women understand the full impact of becoming empowered, empowered to heal. Uh, I'm talking about my very special co-host today, Audrey Michelle. But before we do that, hello, Benny. Hi, Pat. How you doing? Doing very well. Much more hydrated and with the knowledge upstairs from the the last hour. Yeah, we're good to go. I got my water in a bottle over here. Feeling pretty good about it, too. too. I know. That's what I'm saying. That's uh, that's really good to be able to share information. Mm -hmm. Um, For those of us that are in the world, you know, we go through life and things happen. And so the question is, how do we pull ourselves up from it? You heard me talk a little bit about that in the last hour. Um, But if... If you're if you're listening to the show and you're thinking, well, wait a minute, what are you talking about? What kinds of things could possibly happen to me in my life? You know, what is it that you're referring to? There is a, an entire list of things that help us slip down the empowerment scale. You know, things that can happen to us where we could go from possibly even thriving in life to barely surviving And I think all of you understand what I'm talking about. You know, today you're going to hear from Audrey about what that actually looks like for her. You know, she began sharing her own journey uh, to healing and wellness in her blog, Rewired Life. Uh, Did that starting in 2013. And then as time goes on, you know, there becomes this passion, just like with me, a passion for sharing a message. The message is to love yourself, to heal your body and mind, and to celebrate life. And that message then turns into, I think I would like to share it with more people. But how do I talk about vulnerability? How do I share stories? How do we do this in a way, as she has done, to empower women to become their best selves? So whether it's in our personal lives, our relationships, our health, or a business, we all have obstacles to overcome and layers to work through. That's what she does really, really well. In her book, fabulous book, Rewired Life, A Journey to Untangle Chronic Pain and Endometriosis, I didn't even get that right, Uh, Audrey talks about what the journey is like. But more importantly, what happens when you come out the other side and now you're taking this message out into the world? Today, I love to be able to share who she is, her journey, and the upcoming radio show, Rewired Life Radio with Audrey Michelle. Audrey, it's great to have you here. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. This is, this is awesome. Did you like the way I totally boggled that uh, 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 illness. Endometriosis. Yeah. Did you like the way I did that? And I, I'm so glad I did that because now you're not as nervous because you, you saw me just mess up right there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, don't worry. You should have been on the last hour. I couldn't even say water. Um, <laughs> uh, but let, let's start with the conversation uh, with, with you a little bit. Um, empowering women to heal. There is a bigger conversation on what this means 
If you're a woman listening to this, you know what we're talking about at a personal level. But what has this come to mean for you? And why is this important in the world today for you? You know, for me, like you said, healing came from healing chronic pain and endometriosis, uh, healing disease for myself. Um, So it was like a, a big thing, right? Big healing. And over the years, I've talked to so many women that tend to discount their own healing because it's not like a big, big thing, right? Like no big trauma. And honestly, the conversation of healing can look like healing from an argument you just had with your husband or your friend or your mom. Um, And it's almost like Death by a Thousand Cuts was literally just a a blog that I wrote. And it's like these little things that we don't heal it's like picking a scab over and over and over that, and then this, this cut never heals. Um, so, so for me, the conversation of empowering women to heal is to understand these little cuts and these little things that can add up to be a big thing. Mm -hmm. And then if it adds up to be a big thing, how do we take these layers back and get realigned with ourselves? Yeah. You know, I I remember Dr. Darvish talking to me, oh, you know, 15 years ago or so about the layers, about peeling them back. And what I hear you saying and what you you share so beautifully in your book is there are physical scars, there are mental scars, and there are emotional scars. And Uh I use that term because that's a language that people understand. And each of them has their own layer or layers, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's different for everybody. Different for, you know, every woman I work mainly with women, but Mm -hmm. men too, um, of how that shows up and how things affect you. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, tell me, tell us a little bit more about this process of healing because there is a process and clearly, you know, there was a circumstance in your life which enabled you to tap into that. Uh, And now you work with others. But, you know, let's talk about the process of healing and, you know, how it not only shows up for you and how it showed up for you in the past, but, you know, now it's showing up for you in ways that you share with other people. Sure. So the process that um, kind of organically happened for me in my healing journey was to first love yourself, heal your body and mind and celebrate life. So I first had to love myself when I was, you know, totally at rock bottom, just like taking pain pills and muscle relaxers and hormones and mood stabilizers and the whole spiel of of just pill after pill and still being not well, still being in pain and still being, you know, all over the place emotionally. Um, For me, it showed up in like one explosive emotional day, um, that I write about in the book Mm -hmm. and I, you know, chose to call my husband and blame this awful cereal bowl sitting on the counter, blamed that for ruining my day. And I I chose to call my husband at work and explode on him about how he has now ruined my day because he can't possibly put a cereal bowl in the dishwasher. And um, bless his heart, he ever so calmly said, you know, love, like I can't, I can't talk right now. Like, why don't you take something and take a nap? Mm-hmm. And I went into my room and, you know, I had my basket of pills next to me by the bed that I could, you know, just automatically like open and take whatever it was I thought I needed at the time, just based on how it felt and the size of it. I knew them by heart. Yeah. And I looked at each one of these and, um, and I didn't want any of them. I went through that whole basket for the first time and was just like, no, I don't want this like this is supposed to be giving me quality of life and I can assure you my quality of life sucks and it hasn't sucked more than it does right now and I was just like I quit I'm done like I don't know the difference between you know is this a side effect or is this me feeling this way like I don't know anymore and in that moment the need to know myself became greater than my short-term need to make the pain go away or, or, you know, whatever it was I needed in the short term. And for me, choosing to quit all of these pills is what it, what I needed in that moment. Yeah. And, um, and so it became this choice of having to love myself first, 
even when, you know, I, I wasn't getting out of bed for days. Like I still had to find something about my life that I could say I unconditionally love myself, which is so hard. We're so hard on ourselves. Like if this was my little nephew, of course I would just like hold him and love him. But to do that for myself was, was very, very hard. Um, so switching my mindset from being like frustrated and angry and mad and why can't you do this? Why can't you get out of bed? To like, okay, we're in a mess right now. Yeah. And, you know, giving myself that patience and cushion and love to switch gears and shift in a way that I hadn't ever before. Yeah. That's how it started. Yeah. You know, what you're talking about, I find, is what, oh, if you if you hear people that have gone through, um, you know, chronic illness, and, you know, not to say that we, you know, there's something other than chronic illness, but I got to tell you that the numbers and statistics on this have never been higher, and they're growing at such a, 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 a pace. The curve on this is incredible, and yet we don't have any tools, really. You know, what I love about what you shared is not only did you go through the process, but as a result of that, you know, you've identified a way to work with women in particular it, it, to help them so that we don't walk around thinking we're losing our mind, you know, that mm-hmm. we should be something other than we are. You know, I don't know about you or what it was like growing up, Audrey, but I know, you know, a lot of times we hear just suck it up, you know, take mm-hmm. two aspirin, call me in the morning. Um, but there is a level of, of body, mind and spirit that happens during this process. And we don't think about loving ourselves, do we? No. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. Yeah. In my situation, it was take two more pain pills. Exactly. Right. (laughs) Call me later. So, um, yeah, for me to just stop, for me to choose to stop relying on, pills to make whatever I was feeling just go away was huge. And to start looking inward and being like, okay, maybe there's something more to why I'm feeling this way. And, and really it was, you know, veering left of center or right of center, you know, just, just getting away from myself. And so my healing journey was really about choosing, choosing to have things in my life that aligns with my true self and letting go of the things that no longer aligned. Yeah. And now you're helping people all over the world with this. We're going to take a short break. Uh, When we come back, uh, I just want to make sure uh, Audrey's going to tell us about a really exciting, just incredible program she's putting together. We're also going to give a copy of Audrey's book away, Rewired Life. Uh, We're going to tell you about how to find out more about her how to work with her, go to her web website, all of the above. Just take a look at what she's doing to help people regain that inner strength, that amazing transformative empowerment level. We'll be right back. You're high upon the tower, now don't look down. I will be okay here on the ground. And you can always... To say hello from time to time when you're no longer. Transformation Talk Radio is dedicated to the education and awareness of Lyme disease. Hey, everybody, welcome back to Lyme Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Pat, joined here by Dr. Nusheen Darvish. Dr. Pat Basili and Dr. Nusheen Darvish will be bringing the most innovative, groundbreaking information, research, treatment innovations, and stories from those it affects every day. I'm so excited to be talking about this. We have so much to share. Dr. Darvish and I are planning to do is connect the dots. People suffering with all sorts of chronic diseases, it's time. It is time for them to transform. Tune into Lyme Talk Radio and and help keep our mission strong. For the loyal listeners out there that have been listening to this incredible show on Lyme disease, we are not going to let you down. We're going to come through stronger and enrich the platform for Lyme disease awareness through Lyme Talk Radio. The message will continue. The conversations will become stronger and the healing epic. 
Treat the Body and Expand the Soul on June 1st with Lynn Brown. In this all-inclusive retreat, you'll treat your body with breakout sessions in the various elements of nature. Enjoy fireside chats while harnessing the healing energy of fire. Allow more light with more ease and activate that connection between the body and spirit. Call 206-931-7356 or visit lynnmbrown.com. Introducing the Lucid Planet, a digital gathering place featuring cutting-edge, high-vibrational content that will empower and inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. Visit the Lucid Planet today to stimulate your mind, body, and soul as you connect with a global community of like-minded people. The Lucid Planet is edited by renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly Neff, who is here to help you cope with anxiety, connect to your higher purpose, uncover your true passions, and live your dreams. Dr. Kelly's fresh, compassionate perspective emphasizes growth, transformation, healing, and thriving. Even in the face of adversity, say goodbye to bad news and low vibrational media for good and become part of the larger collective of people working together to navigate the global shift of consciousness and transform the world from within. Join the planet, the Lucid Planet. Visit thelucidplanet.com. Welcome home. Tune in to the Psychic Professors Show, The Voices of Spirit Radio, with international medium and spirit artist Dr. Susan Barnes on Transformation Talk Radio, featuring a variety of spiritual topics such as psychic art, spiritualism, EVP, psychic development, and mediumship. This hit call-in show provides listeners with breakthrough wisdom to enliven and enlighten their lives. Visit spiritartgallery.net for show days and times. Everyone, welcome back. I'm so thrilled to have Audrey Michelle joining me here uh, on the show today. Uh, for those of you out there, you're going to hear a lot more from her as she gets ready to launch her fabulous hit show with us, Rewired Life Radio. Um, and we're going to tell you a little bit more about that as well. Today, we're talking about how do we how do we change? How do we heal? You know, what can we know about ourselves and what can we learn? You know, today we're talking with Audrey about how do we empower women to heal and learn to love ourselves, to heal our body, mind, and celebrate life. Um, Rewired Life Radio was created to empower women to heal, you know, to help women listen to their body and inner wisdom. And this is a fabulous hit show which you're going to hear a lot more about as we move forward here. I'll just going to tell us a little bit about it. Inspires women to live at their live at our best. And you know, those of us that have not lived at our best, we know that there is a fundamental difference at all the levels of body, mind, and spirit when we do this. So today, I am so thrilled to have her here. You know, as we talk about what this means. Um, before we talk about what does it mean to love yourself. Uh, Audrey, f- let's tell folks the best way they can find out more about you, and then they can sign up, too, to get reminders about the radio as well as how they can uh, win a-, a seat in your online class, Soul Awakening. So tell us a little bit about this and the best way to do it. Yeah, lots going on. So you can find about out about all of it on my website, AudreyMichelle.com, and Michelle is spelled M-I-C-H-E-L, so AudreyMichelle.com. Uh, and so if you go to AudreyMichelle.com slash radio is where you can listen to Rewired Life Radio live every Wednesday at noon. And uh, I am giving away a spot in my online class, Soul Awakening, for anybody um, who signs up for my weekly reminders. You'll be put in uh, a pot that I'm going to draw out on my first radio show next week, a winner who gets, um, like I said, a spot on my six-week online class. It's a $475 value. So I'm super excited to give that away to a lucky winner. Awesome. Uh, and today during the show, we would love to give a copy of Audrey's book away to our first caller, uh, 1-800-930-2819. 
1-800-930-2819. Love yourself. How many times have we heard that? How many times have we heard that? But we, you know, Audrey, we don't even know what that means, right? You know, we can treat ourselves really poorly and we think we're actually loving ourselves. But, you know, Mm -hmm. I think if we go through trauma like you went through and I went through, we have a whole new understanding, don't we? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. What does it mean? What is this unconditional love thing all about? Uh, Really, it's about, for me, it's about being patient with myself and understanding myself and being curious about how I feel. Um, so for me, when things are starting to feel misaligned, I feel it in my body. Um, and it's different for everybody. You know, mine shows up as this little, like, I call it sticky rib. It's this rib on my left side that just kind of like pokes me in the side and, and it's like, it has something to say. And I have other women who it shows up in like heart palpitations or, um, spikes in, in their sugars. And, and that's how their body is just like giving them a little, just flick them a little bit, like, hey, I need you to pay attention. I need you to think about what you're up to. And um, so finding this place of patience um, when you're most frustrated, when you start to catch yourself feeling angry, frustrated, resentful, you know, all those sort of heavy feelings. Yeah. Um, I just check in and... Um, and see how I'm feeling, right? Mm-hmm. And again, if I'm feeling heavy, just check in and be like, okay, start again. Like, reevaluate, like, what, what's off and, um, and move forward from there. So I've got a ton of tools that help you break that cycle of, um, I mean, I do it too. Like, head down the rabbit hole of like, oh, my gosh, like, what am I doing? And, and um, just being hard on yourself. Yeah. I mean, we don't even know sometimes that we're being hard on ourselves. And I'd love for you and I to talk about this a little bit. Um, someone said to me or asked me a question actually not too long ago. And they said to me, you know, when did you discover in your healing journey, Pop, that you weren't loving yourself? And so here's what I said, and I'd love for you to comment about it. I said, look it. You know, when I was a kid, I accidentally put myself, my hand on a hot stove and I immediately jerked my hand off, right? Got a little scar on my, my, my hand from doing that as a kid, right, Audrey? So I mm-hmm. put my hand because I was so excited to be helping my grandma. I was like helping my grandma cook the meatballs, right? Mm-hmm. right? I was cooking the meatballs and my grandma would put me on a chair. I'd stand on a chair. Um, and I remember that I, I don't know, you don't know what's hot. And I, t- I hit something hot. I immediately took my hand off and my grandma did that. That's not what it was like for me. So I think this idea about self-love and self-loathing happens differently, at mm-hmm. least for me. Sometimes I wish it was like one day I love myself and the next day I pulled my I pulled my heart off the hot burner and I didn't. But it was different. It was more like this slow thing that would happen over time, one instance at a time, that I went from whatever that unconditional love was to whatever it wasn't. And I, I wanted to talk with you about that because I think for women, we can't see it coming. What do you think? For sure. That's what I see over and over and over is it's this slow shift that, like you said, happens over time that you don't notice. And then then it's like all of a sudden one day you wake up and you're just like, what happened? This is not how I want to treat myself. And so I literally have this conversation over and over and over with women about, you know, again, this death by a thousand cuts, like I slowly started not treating myself well and not making myself a priority and not feel not filling my own bucket of energy first before it starts to spill over into my partner, my life partner, my family, the world. Right. And, and all of a sudden we just get exhausted. And so bringing it all back and, and filling your own energy bucket first allows you to give in a way that's, 
unconditional, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever experienced um, somebody giving you or doing something for you um, from a place that feels like like there's strings attached or oh, like yeah. their claws are attached, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. The idea is you can't give from a place of unconditional love for yourself or for anybody else mm-hmm. if you're exhausted and depleted. Like you're not doing it from a place of pure love. Mm-hmm. And so um, filling up your own energy bucket and um, caring for yourself first, although sometimes seems um, selfish, is actually the opposite. Like the more you are filled up yourself, the more you can give to yourself and others in a very meaningful way that's not having strings attached. Like, you know, yeah. oh, I'm going to do this for you, but now I expect you to do something for me. So I'm like so tired. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Totally different space. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Uh, I learned that there's a term for that. And uh, the term I learned uh, was because of many years in therapy, if I have to admit that. Um, and it's called codependence. And, yeah. you know, so that's a fancy term for saying just what Audrey said. You know, that's doing stuff for people that you don't really want to do. Now, I'm not talking in general, but clearly there are some days that you, you know, you don't want to do things for someone. But, you know, this is a heartfelt uh, action. We're not talking about that. But it is it is this idea of chipping away at parts of our soul. And that's why you're going to be doing this class, chipping away at parts of our soul time after time again in ways where we don't stop to replenish ourselves. Isn't that what you're talking about here for self-love? You know, we got to figure out if we're going to give, 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 we're going to have to figure out how to fill the pot up again. Yeah. Yep. And so um, my class has um, six weeks of tools to be able to not only notice when your pot is starting to get empty, but how to fill it back up and how to stop that cycle of... um, or like mm-hmm. I like to call it, having holes in your bucket. How to how to fill the holes in your bucket so yeah. that it's not leaking. Yeah, and you know, filling the energy leaks. Yeah, because we don't want those. You know what? Uh, we absolutely need to be fully engaged and at least at a hundred percent in today's world. You know, we're going to talk when we come back. How do we find love and patience for ourselves, you know, in scenarios where we're totally frustrated? But most importantly, is that going to get us to a place of healing or not? How is that going to either take us farther away from healing and holistic wellness? Or how does it how does it take us closer? Audrey Michelle in the house. Uh, let's take a short break, everyone. We'll be right back. Tune in to the hit show, Mouthing Off with Chef Rossi. Chef Rossi mouths off about different subjects in pursuit of breaking down walls and opening up your minds. She and Dr. Pat banter back and forth, taking from the headlines of the day on subjects that reach beyond what goes on in the world into your hearts. And go to theragingskillet.com to find out more and let Chef Rossi know what's on your mind. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our real house to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the drpatshow.com. Hey, did you know why they call the foundation the foundation? It's called the foundation because it completely eliminates your foundation for what you thought your reality was and creates a whole new space where you can have an entirely new 
reality that is foundationless. So from my point of view, they should call it the unfoundation or the foundationlessness. Either way, there's a big new global rewrite happening again because these guys cannot stop changing. There should be like a change anonymous that Gary and Dane go to. And it's happening April 28th to May 1st. You can find out about it at accessconsciousness.com forward slash global foundation. It's happening in Paris. Go to Paris or do it online or find a pod near you. These are all the options you have. And what else is possible? Brand consultant Jen Morgan is here with Radically Distinct Radio to help you take control of your future and maximize your brand's power to produce results. Whether you're an individual trying to reinvent yourself and launch a new venture, or you're an executive trying to reposition your company to modernize your sales and marketing programs, Jen Morgan and the Rad Method empower you to play to your strengths and show up in the world as your most powerful brand. To learn more, go to jenmorgan.com. That's Jen with two N's, morgan.com, or call 206 9 the earth is an ever-changing being goddess light shamanic healer brie gibbs guides us through the ascending worlds bringing forth knowledge and truth as a light creator she is here to provide new information needed at this time in our evolution join brie as she shares messages from guides spirits ascended masters goddesses and others Tune in the second and fourth Monday, 11 a.m. Pacific, and Thursdays, 1 p.m. Pacific, for Silver Gaia Radio. Baby's black balloon makes a fly. Almost fell into a hole in your life. You know what? Thinking about tomorrow Cause you were the same as me Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. I'm so thrilled to be, first of all, talking with all of you and introducing Audrey to you. Um, Audrey Michelle is my co-host today. Rewired Life is the title of her fabulous book. Uh, But more importantly, what Audrey does is she helps people, women in particular, she helps understand that we too can heal. Um, she has an upcoming uh, class, which you all are going to want to know about, called Soul Awakening. Uh, you can go to her website, AudreyMichelle.com, and it's M-I-C-H-E-L uh, dot com. Uh, tell us a little bit about the Soul Awakening uh, class that you're creating. Sure. So the class takes the idea to love yourself, heal your body and mind, and celebrate life, and it breaks it down into three-week modules and and it's really about giving you tools to um understand how to love your whole self first Mm -hmm. even if it's like the good the bad the ugly all the stuff under the rug all the stuff you've shoved into boxes and hidden in the back corner of your closet all of that stuff it's just love your whole self first and then um i have i have techniques and lessons that i learned along my journey towards healing and wellness to give you um, a step-by-step guide to walking through the healing process. Mm -hmm. Um, So shifting your mindset, um, actions to help you grow and expand into your best self. So I love it. It's all about um, discovering self-love, creating empathy, um, defining what your best self is, one of my favorites, listening to your body is mm-hmm. huge um, to be able to understand, again, if we're heading down the an aligned path or a misaligned path, your body uh, has all those messages for you. It will tell you if you're on the right path or not. And then uh, craving nourishment, uh, to listen to what your body is craving to help you heal. And then, of course, um, Celebrating life is all about gratitude and joy and being intentional about finding finding joy and creating a space uh, for gratitude. Mm-hmm. So that is the class. 
Wow. You know, I, I mean, for those people listening, we're going to tell folks lots, lots more uh, about it. But most importantly, I think what we're talking about today is that we don't have to suffer and we don't have to go through life and suffer. And mm-hmm. today is just a, a snapshot of what you're going to be bringing forward on the show. Um You know, before we went to break, we were talking about loving ourselves. And I said, uh, you know, how does loving ourselves, how does this finding love and patience for ourselves, uh, even when we're in the deepest part of our frustration, how does that help us get to the place to heal? What did healing look like for you? It really looked like kind of, I don't want it looked like accepting what had gone wrong, honestly, like accepting how far I had gotten off, off path and, and just being like, okay, like we made some choices that weren't our best. We made the best decision for ourselves that we could at the time. Right. And at the time it looked like, you know, medical treatments and hormone treatments and pain pills and that whole thing. And, you know, 17 years into that, all of a sudden, taking those pain pills weren't the best decision for me mm-hmm. any longer. Mm-hmm. So numbing was no longer the best decision for me. Mm-hmm. And um, really feeling the feelings around um, my emotional state, what happened emotionally during, yeah. you know, the chronic pain. It yeah. was like maybe one thing started the pain, but then like during living all of this pain, like created more and more and more stuff. So it was unpacking all of that and, and really starting to understand, I call it either feeling like a sunshine and happy faces, like kittens and unicorns or feeling like heavy, heavy feelings and just experimenting with myself. Like is the decision I'm making for myself right now feel like sunshine and happy faces or, you know, like heavy and ugly and, and just experimenting. Like if I, in one situation or another, pick sunshine and happy faces, how does that feel? And just, it was like a continual experiment with myself of Mm -hmm. being curious about how I felt. So just continuing to pick sunshine and happy faces was the, only way for me to dig out of the giant dark hole that I had dug for myself. It was like, in my book, I talk about being like, I was like a dog just digging the China underneath this fence. And I would have just like kept on digging and digging and digging. And all of a sudden there was just like this glimmer of light that I, I was just like, huh, I wonder what that's about. And for me, it started as acupuncture and, um, and just kind of, being curious about how that felt for me. And it felt really good. You know, and some women I work with are like, nope, hate it. And I'm like, (laughs) okay, great. Don't do it. Like, well, try something else. And so it was just this very experimental phase of like, this acupuncture work. I do a lot of kinesiology and spiritual work. Like, how does that feel? And, um, you know, just seeing what works for you and, and knowing that your own body is is the smartest, best tool that you have. Like, it will tell you what it wants. And that was huge for me to know, like, I was in charge of my own healing journey, where before I would have, you know, talked to the, doc- you know, this doctor, that doctor, this person, my parents, my family, my friends, like, what do you think I should do? And all of a sudden, it was just like, nope. I was like, I know you're a medical doctor, and you think that taking more pain pills is what I should be doing right now, but I'm just tired and I'm just, I got to try something else just for me. I just got to try it. And if it doesn't work, the pills are going to be there and I can go back to doing whatever I was doing. And like I said, my, the medication I was taking wasn't saving my life. It was all quality of life kind of stuff. And so, um, getting off the drugs was, was, um, the best decision for me, but Mm -hmm. again, it may not be for everybody. Well, I think, yeah. And what I love about what you're saying is for me, it was kind of the same journey. You know, I, I entered into a realm of, of healing and, and looking at the, even the word holistic was foreign to me. Uh, And I, I had to learn about that. And the entire uh, direction of the show changed 
you know, I had to understand the impact of positive versus negative thinking, you know, mm-hmm. and the show then and now the network is a positive talk network. And I say that. Uh, and yeah. somebody said to me, oh, so then you don't talk about politics. I said, no, that's not true. It's the way we talk about things. Um mm-hmm. But I love the way you described it because I had to try things and I too tried acupuncture and I even tried cupping and I loved cupping. Now, I, I, love, cupping. I love cupping. I know. What does that say about us? But anyway, I, I loved it. But the problem with cupping was, you know, especially if you're in a relationship and thanks to Michael Phelps, we all know what that looks like. It was the best thing for me. I just loved it. I couldn't get enough of it. Right. Mm hmm. That's what it's we have to try. It's all about out of your body. Yeah, that's, you what it's, that, that's what it's like. But what you're really talking about is helping people uh, find what is going to work for them in the healing yeah. journey. And giving them the confidence to just be like, yeah, I'm doing some weird stuff, and it is great. And You know what I mean? Having that confidence to say it when maybe your friends or your family are just like, I'm sorry, you're doing what? Right. Like, just like, yeah, I'm doing it and it is working for me and I'm feeling really good about it. And, and just feeling safe mm-hmm. and secure in that space to stand up for yourself and be like, I'm just trying it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but maybe it will. And, you know, for me, I was just at that place of desperation where I was just mm-hmm. like, I don't even care anymore. Like I'm at the bottom of the bottom. And so if this weird cupping thing makes me feel better, then that's what I'm doing. Yeah, I just did a whole show on water and I shared some information about uh, my blood work that changed. And Mm -hmm. I got to tell you, even my friends that know me uh, and they've known me for decades, when I started to talk about this water thing, they were like, oh, my God, you're just so weird, Pat. I mean, like you're like, why would you even? And, you know, I think we have to learn to have enough confidence to trust our own intuition And then to be able to go back to them and say, yeah, I just want to share this little bit of information with you about my blood work. But Mm -hmm. often we get derailed, Audrey, before we even come out of the gate. How did you get past that? Uh, Honestly, I had to just stop telling people at the beginning. (laughs) I just stopped because I, you know, I had little infant legs in, in in my little journey. And so... To hear like, oh, acupuncture doesn't work or, oh, you know, talking about your feelings and unpacking all this stuff like that's not going to get rid of disease. And and it's true. Endometriosis is an incurable disease, but that doesn't mean I can't be healed from it. And I don't experience the pain anymore. And um, and so I had to just stop talking about it and get to a place of confidence for myself and know that I felt better. And then all of a sudden people started noticing that I felt better. Like I wasn't, you know, tired and, and, you know, quite frankly on drugs and, mm-hmm. um, you know, just a multitude of pain pills and it was noticeable. Yeah. And those around me started noticing and being like, you look, you look better. And then I would start saying like, Oh, I've been, you know, I've been doing this thing. And, and if they started asking me questions and I would open up more, but, um, That's how it worked for me, you know, obviously different for other people, but I had to just get the confidence on my own to be like, yeah, this stuff that I'm doing is working. And so, so now all of a sudden it's like affecting those around me, you know, my friends and family all of a sudden are like, Hmm, maybe I'll try this. You know, do you think it'll help with, with what it is I'm experiencing? And I'm always just like, yeah, yeah, maybe, you know? You know what I love about what you're sharing here today uh, is that, you know, something just hit me. I remember when I was trying to explain why what I was getting ready to do and some of the things that Dr. Darvish and I were doing, uh, why I was going to do it. What what was it about that that I was going to do? But, you know, I didn't have you to work with. So I didn't have you to help me trust my intuition. So I didn't Mm -hmm. have someone there to say, gee, Pat, you don't maybe don't want to tell, you know, your husband, your wife, your loved one, your partner, your sister, your mother, you may want to not go into every detail. 
the, about what your treatments are, right? Um, mm-hmm. Because some of this is intuition and only we know what our body's saying to us. Isn't that what happened with you as well? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was like that, like I said, I call it Cereal Bowl Day. In my <laughs> book, it's a chapter called Cereal Bowl Day. Um, it was literally like the little tiny voice of intuition, you know, it had been speaking to me all along, but I had just been like pushing it down, pushing it down about maybe these medications aren't for you anymore. Maybe they topped out and they did all that they're supposed to do and, and we're done. And I just kept being like, well, no, that can't be because it's always worked. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep doing it because it's always worked except for it wasn't working anymore. And all of a sudden that day, like, like I said, my per- perception shifted and these things that used to work, I was starting to realize weren't working and it gave space for this little voice to speak up. And, and it's just like, I imagine this like little mm-hmm. tiny thing, like raising its hands, like, um, excuse me, maybe we should try quitting, you know, like maybe we should try something else. And for the first time I was in a space that I could hear that, Yeah, you know, I was, I I like to tell people I work with, women I work with, like, I got quiet enough in that moment of, you know, it was like this fit of rage. And then, and then there's nothing left, right? So it was this quiet space that this little voice of intuition had its little opportunity to be like, maybe there's another way. I'm just saying, maybe, you know, and all of a sudden I was just like, oh, maybe, But I had to get quiet enough to hear that. Yeah. So let's talk about, you know, what happens next. And what I mean by that is I did not do this next piece well. Um, And, you know, uh, let's go ahead and skip the break, Benny, because I want to make sure we we talk about this. I did not do the celebrate part well. And I don't think there could be a more powerful message than what you're bringing forward about that. Um, because we wait, we wait, we wait for like the big celebration, but I don't think that's what you're saying. I think you're talking about, yeah, tell, tell us why celebration is important. Well, because exactly what you said, we tend to be like, and I totally did this when I started my journey and I was like, oh, I'm really doing this healing thing. When I'm done, we're going to like go to the beach, like water, the beach (laughs) is like my happy place right one of my happy places and you know this was 2008 here it is 2017 and I will still tell you there's healing for me to do Mm -hmm. even though my line in the sand is 2012 when like my pain and symptom free medication free the whole spiel I will still tell you that there's more work to be done so it's a continuous journey so Mm -hmm. if I were to wait it would never happen but so, right, I'm not talking about the big, big, like, go on a vacation, do the thing or whatever the big celebration is. It's literally about, you know, some of those days where I would get out of bed and be like, oh, my God, I do not feel good. Like, I could so take a pain pill right now, and that is not what I want to be doing. And so shifting my mindset into today, my tea is hot. Like, yeah. I am so happy. And I'm just going to give joy and gratitude to the fact that, you know, I have a husband that is supporting me through this healing journey while I'm, I wasn't working. I lost my job at the time and, um, and just having gratitude that I was able to sleep as long as I slept. And I had this hot cup of, of, of tea. Now it's coffee. Then it was tea, um, to warm my body. Yeah. And to just give gratitude to that. Yeah. And I started this pretty solid practice of, of nightly just writing my gratitude. And at first, you know, we all do like around um, Christmas, around Thanksgiving, you know, how there tends to be around Facebook, like, oh, 30 days of, of gratitude. And yeah. it all starts with like, oh, I'm grateful for my husband, grateful for my family. I'm grateful, you know, beyond like, yes, got it. We're all grateful for those things. But when it gets beyond that, those are the things that I was interested in of, of being grateful for the mundane, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, 
and being able to shift, right? Because I could have been like, oh, like hard on myself, like, oh my God, it's 1030 and I just got out of bed. Like, I haven't <laughs> done anything. Like, but instead it was like, I'm grateful that I have a supportive husband and I could allow myself to sleep as much as my body needed to sleep and that there's tea in the drawer. And I am grateful for that. Yeah. I, I mean, what you're talking about is you have to start somewhere. Yeah. And, and I love the expression. I probably one of the odd people. I love fake it till you make it. And the reason I love that term is because I don't actually believe that there's any anything called fake in it. I don't believe it. What I believe is that we get what we actually have. But in our society, there's this phrase, fake it till you make it. And I used to practice in my living room when I was younger, being a national table tennis player. And I would be like with my little paddle in there pretending that I was in front of this big championship, right? And I had my little racket. And of course, there's nobody in the room with me right there, Audrey, right? And, you know, it's just like me, like doing it, like in front of the mirror. Now, was I actually in the master championship? No. But there is an expression and a feeling that happens when we can feel that, right, that energy. How important is it uh, for us to get that gratitude healing mojo going, even if we don't want to? Right? That's what you got to do it the most. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm the worst at, you know what I mean? Like I teach this stuff and I talk about this stuff constantly and I'll still find myself being like, you know, if I'm whatever, um, not feeling well or whatever, not using my tools. And then all of a sudden I'll be like, okay, bring it back to a space of gratitude and um, switching from fear to love. And um, that's when we need it the most is, is yeah. you know, when we forget. Yeah. So I'm a I'm big into Kundalini yoga. So yeah. uh, Yogi Bhajan says uh, any negative thought will decrease your energy by thirty percent. Yeah. When I heard that, I was just like, oh, yeah. I got you. Can feel it. You can yeah. feel it. And so being able to shift and be like and start again, right? Forgive yourself and start again. And just be like, whoops, like I had a negative thought, and that's okay. I'm going to start again. To be able to not run down that rabbit hole of negativity yeah. and, and let it just take over your day and take over your energy. Yeah. So, yeah. Celebrating and life. Celebrating life at every level, you know, and celebrating yeah. life. I mean, I learned something. I learned a mantra by a teacher that I had. And the mantra was, Pat and, Mich- uh, and Audrey, I think you got the same kind of brain, mind. They said, Mm -hmm. you know, your mind is always going. It's creating something, either some fantasy, some idea, something your mind is going. Your mind also is going on things that are not going well for you. And they said, I'm going to give you like some tool that's going to change your life. And they said to me, I want you to say 70 times a day for 70 days. Thank you, God. Now, this, whether it's God, whether it's Allah, whether it's Buddha, whatever that is, thank you, universe, it doesn't matter. And they, t- they gave me that assignment. And they said, I just want you to do it. So here's what happened to me. I kept losing count of how many times. <laughs> I kept losing count. So I yeah. would always have to start over. And that is one of those things that I think you're talking about. you got to find the tools. But you help people with the tools. I didn't have a lot of help. A lot of women don't have a lot of help. How can they get help from you around this? Tell us how to do that. What a great show. Thank you for today. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, again, uh, if you go to AudreyMichelle.com, there's, first of all, my book is an easy way to read about what I'm up to. Um, And I also do one-on-one coaching. Um, and then there's my online class, Soul Awakening is another way. And then I've got free content on my website. And so, um, some little quick little meditations to help you, uh, fill, or I guess not fill your energy bucket, but stop the leaks in your energy bucket, um, ways to listen to your body. And so different meditations to help you reconnect and listen to what's going on. Awesome. Gear up that website yeah. again, please, and tell folks how to get a copy of your book. Yes, it's AudreyMichelle.com, 
and uh, my book uh, is um, is on there as well. It's all on my website. So AudreyMichelle.com. Uh, there's the book, there's the free content meditations, and then my class as well. And so again, we're giving away, I'm giving away one spot on my, in my soul awakening class. So if you go to AudreyMichelle.com slash radio. Go ahead and do it because Audrey knows how to help us. We're going to take a short break, everyone. More on Transfers Talk Radio coming up. We'll, we'll see you in a little bit. Audio was via a Skype call. 